Welcome to Friday Night Chats with Garage Geek. Hope you had a nice week. It's still kind of chilly here in Los Angeles. I'm, I'm, uh, I got my cover here. I got my dog between my legs. Sounds weird, but he keeps me warm there. So this week, what happened? Um, the Academy Awards list came out, and I printed my list, and I've been crossing out what I've already seen. And uh, I made a list also of what's available on streaming that I haven't seen yet. And I uh, throughout this week, I watched two of them. I'm not in a hurry. I usually don't, you know, try to get everything done before the awards. I mean, if I can, that's fine. But I know everything that's on the awards won't be available uh, s until sometimes even, you know, way after the, the awards are done. So, I, you know, if I... I just kind of follow it and um, see what I can get done. So of the 10 best pictures, I had already seen two. And I went ahead and watched one this week. So I've already seen Elvis and Everything Everywhere all at once. Um, and so this week I watched The Banshees of Inishirin. And then another one that I watched was a documentary, which was Navalny. Uh, so I'll talk about both of those. So I really don't have a lot to talk about this week, but knowing me, I'll probably talk a lot about the little that I have. I don't have a lot of variety either. Um, music wise, I've kind of been listening to, um, King Crimson a lot this week. Um, I, you know, I had, I bought a couple CDs and so I've been listening to those and I, I was listening to... I, that Ella Fitzgerald set that I bought. It's a three CD set. And otherwise, um, I've been reading. Um, I'm trying. I wanted to have this done by the time uh, I was doing this video, but I only got two thirds. Um, so I hope to finish this this weekend and I'll be able to talk uh, with you about it next week. So that's um, Philip K. Dix Ubik. I know I, I mentioned this two weeks ago or maybe three that I started it. But I'm really bad recently. I'll pick up a book and then I'll put it down for a couple weeks. And I need to get out of that habit. The thing is, like, I was, you know, spending a lot of my free time reading this. And then I wasn't able to play, you know, my video games or whatever. So, you know, whichever one you choose, you've got to sacrifice because it's all time. So, uh, like I said, I I watched five movies and I have one one book to discuss uh and the book was uh, a group of short stories uh by claire keegan and the name of that book is um walk the blue fields and it was a, a short story collection so there you go claire keegan now the reason i picked this book is because i had read her Christmas story, I forget what, what it's called, but it's a Christmas story um, that was nominated for the Booker, and it was about the, um, no, it was par in part about the the women, um, oh, I from, I'm forgetting what they're called, but they, they had to work in the... Um, in Ireland, they they had to work in the laundries. I forget what they're called. But anyways, um, that was a really, really good story about a, a man who sees what's going on and he turns away. And, um, you know, later on in the, in the story, he's got to make a decision. And um, this group of short stories uh, was really um, had a lot to do with ireland and um life there uh, for poor people it, it, a really good group of short stories uh what was really interesting that was um oh another reason that i i uh, decided to read this one is because uh, my friend liked her writing so much she she wanted to read all of her stuff and um since i enjoyed the other book too i was like okay i'll, I'll do it too and so i went to the library and i mean didn't go to the library physically i went to my library app and I put everything I could by her. There's not much. There's only like three or four. And this was the second I was able to get. There's another one that is short. It's it's like a novella. And that one's available, but it, it, I had to put it on hold. 
Um, so would I recommend this book? I really would. There's a couple of, sh of stories that one was really short that I didn't particularly get much out of, but that's not to say that the writing isn't great. She's, she's a really, really good writer. Um, so I really do recommend this. There are two standout stories in this collection, um, that I, that I think are absolutely worth, uh, reading. So then with books, uh, I watched, like I said, five movies. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is Navalny. So this is, was up for documentary of the year. And, um, my friend was, uh, uh, chastising me because I'm really bad with, sorry, I've got this like iPad light on me. It's like, like lighting me up. So my friend is, uh, chastising me because, uh, what? I'm my dog is... <laughs> My dog is giving me lip because he thinks it's time to go in and get snacks. So my friend was chastising me because I um, I really don't know a lot about politics, top, blah, politics. And she's like, you didn't know who Navalny was? And I was like, no. So like, I went into the documentary not knowing anything, but uh, it's a very eye-opening document. Even if you know a little bit about the story, if you'd heard it from the news, um this was eye-opening so it has this the little byline there poison always leaves a trail um i had no idea it was poisoned i didn't know what was what it was about that name navalny it could have referred to anything so i'm very glad i watched it uh is it like the most riveting documentary i've ever seen no but there's one part of the documentary that is just so like it's crazy because they uh they do some of their own like investigative reporting there's like this little team and uh what comes of that is like it just kind of shocks you at like I feel really really badly because there's a guy um they call him on the phone and he just like tells everything under like they're calling him under false pretenses right but they're trying to find out like how he was poisoned and they even mention later in the movie like they can't find this guy ever again so and they even say after the phone call oh he probably got murdered he will get murdered for what he said and um i mean it's 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 quite shocking right so I don't know, I think I'm kind of being vague, and I kind of spoiled it anyway. I might as well just explain that a little better. So, Naval Navalny um, is on a plane, and he's poisoned. But there, nobody is saying that it's really poison. And they use the type of poison that, uh, after a little while, is untraceable. And so, he um, goes into the hospital... And they're not releasing him because they're basically they're waiting for the poison to get out of his system so it can't be traced. So then um, he actually recovers from it and uh, they they start doing some investigating and they're able to find out where the poison was manufactured because there's a certain type of poison that um, is used in these cases. And... Uh, they actually track the poison down to the the factory and they're able to get the people's um like phone numbers who work there and they're able to do it through some kind of like i don't know computer programming and it, and they start calling everybody and one guy's like oh yeah i'm at home from covid and they're like oh we're from such and such office and we want we're writing a report of why it didn't work so we need to know everything that went on and the guy just starts telling them oh yeah it, we we did this and it didn't work because of this and and they were getting like everything like the all, all the proof and like all the confirmation of everything that happened and how it happened and they were just all shocked and we're watching it as an audience and i was kind of like oh my gosh i feel like i really feel I felt bad for the guy on the phone because you know he like he's 
He thinks he's reporting back to his government, but of course, he's confessing everything. And like I said, they say later that that guy is never heard from again because, you know, he's probably uh, been murdered by the government. It's just, um, it's a pretty shocking scene, and it's, it's just a really, it's kind of surreal, but... Even I didn't know how the documentary would end. And so um, the government just, they put him in jail. And they, like, put him in in in, in jail for, uh, what do they call it? Um, terrorism, acts of terrorism, which it's, it's a really, it's a really uh, good documentary in that sense. Because it's... Um, I don't know, it just lets you know, like, some of the th the, the things are, that are going on in the world. And, uh, you know, someone who fights for democ democracy and what, you know, um, basically a dictator can do to somebody like that. And even though, like, Navalny kind of thinks that because of his strong media presence because he he was always posting videos on on youtube and 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 his support from around the world that he would possibly be protected and he was to a certain extent i mean they didn't come out and just murder him they they tried to do it in you know like a sneaky a sneaky way it was um it was still eye-opening you know like because navalny thought he would he would possibly be safe, but as soon as he returned to Russia, like, nope, they just threw him right in prison. Um, so anyways, that was the first of the five documentaries uh, I saw, and it was the first I had heard of any of that because I, I am politically just, like, so ignorant. I do not know what's going on. My friend was like, you know, you need to look at the, like, CNN's... Did she say CNN? I know she said NPR... She mentioned to to news places like just check their apps every morning or the web you know the the feeds, and I was like yeah I really do need to do that. Um, I used to listen to NPR every morning before uh, I got up for work, but when they were doing their drive, the last time I just got so sick of it that I changed it and I haven't turned it back, which is bad because I know they need those drives to keep their funding. Um, so it's kind of hypocritical of me to only listen to it like when they don't have the drive and then get tired of them during the drive because that's when they need the support, really. But anyways, um, so the next one I'll talk about was for Up for Best Picture, which was the Banshees of Inishirin. So there's the Best Picture list. Um, I loved this movie. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Now, uh, I don't... I'm not going to spoil it. It's, it, I'm just going to try to talk about it in vague terms because, you know, a documentary is different because, like, that's real and, you know, it's news. And so you, sh I guess if you don't know about it, you know, it's like me, you should. But this is a work of fiction, so, I, you know, a story. I won't spoil it. But there was a point in the movie where I was like, mm, this is a little bit unbelievable. Um... But it was, so I said to myself, okay, so this must mean that it's some kind of, like, parable or something. And um, when you start digging, you know, at the at what's going on and start taking it apart, it's absolutely a parable. But that will not stop you from enjoying the movie on the surface. Uh, I, I enjoyed the performances. The scenery is stunning where it's filmed gorgeous the acting great story was so interesting um the characters were quirky uh there there is a subtext in the movie of of animal um animal rights kind of animal rights or um not animal rights but I kind I guess it's kind of animal rights or just animal appreciation, which I absolutely loved. And there's just one scene which I will spoil since it just has to do with animal rights. It's just this tiny little thing. So one of the characters is in the confessional box and talking to a priest, and you know he says, "Well, he was sorry about the death of an animal that he had caused," 
And the priest basically says, well, that's of no concern, right? It's, it's not that big of a deal. And um, the guy in the confessional box says, well, that's the whole problem with, with your religion, basically. And I just thought that was such a great line and, and so powerful, right? Like, I, I mean, I, let's just leave it at that. I thought it was a great line in the movie. I, I just, you know, don't want to go into that more. Um, next. So I went last night to watch another, oh, here's, here's a poster for Banshee. <laughs> My, ew, look how dirty it is. I need to clean that. Okay, there's the thing for the Banshees of Inisherin. Great. I really, really enjoyed that movie. Oh, that one's on HBO, I believe. Let me see, I wrote it down. Yeah, HBO. So if you have HBO, you can watch that one. Really good. Um, Navalny was also on HBO. Uh, so another movie that I watched last night, I was, you know, going through and I was going to pick another one of the of the uh, nominated movies. And I saw the name of this movie and it was called The Torture Chamber of Dr. Sadism. And I was sadism. I was like, you know what? I need to watch this <laughs> That name alone, the torture chamber of Dr. Sadism. I was like, what has this got to be about? And then look at the picture. This was actually the same picture that I saw. Uh, I think it was on HBO. I mean, you got these women over these. Uh, I don't know what you would call that, like a a wheel of spikes. And I don't know that th I was like, I've got to see this. this has got to be just crazy. So. There's a little bit uh, interesting, a little bit of interesting information about this movie. Uh, I actually took a, a picture of it, but I, I didn't, I don't think I put it, it's on my phone, which isn't there. So I'm going to try to go back to Wikipedia because I just want to read you a little bit about this. Let me, um, it's, it's really kind of interesting because the name was changed so many times. So... The movie is also called The Blood Demon, uh, The Snake Pit and the Pendulum, Castle of the Walking Dead. Um, and there's this really interesting trivia, like in Rhode Island, newspapers weren't allowed to use blood or they, it's not that they weren't allowed, it's like they always avoided anything with blood. And so they called it Crimson Demon instead. Now, this is one of those movies, it, it was from, from Germany, so it's it's one of those weird movies where you have some people speaking in one language and other people speaking in another, but they dub it. Like, that happens a lot in, in foreign movies. So, you have people like Christopher Lee, He he's in the movie, so he's speaking English, but all the other actors are speaking, I think, German. I mean, m many of them are speaking German, but who knows if they're speaking a third language like Italian or something like that. Who knows? But anyways, it's one of those weird movies where that's going on. So you have people speaking English and other people speaking like German. But, you know, it's dubbed in English. It's it's just really kind of interesting. But this is one of those um, Edgar Allan Poe based movies. And I don't think it should be based on any. They say, oh, based on the Ed Edgar Allan Poe story. Not at all. The only thing that that unless it's a story I hadn't read, but. I've read The Pit and the Pendulum, and that has nothing to do with this. There's one scene, which was, was actually kind of, you know, of a letdown. So there's this one scene where there's a guy um, tied to the floor. For, first of all, he's chained as, at his wrist. He's chained, and he's got, like, ropes across him. So I was thinking to myself... Oh, and then there's a pendulum coming down. Okay, so that is the only thing it has to do with the pit and the pendulum. That's it. And so the pendulum is coming down, and I was like, well, even if he, if the, I was thinking, well, the pendulum's going to come down, and it's going to cut the ropes, and he's going to be able to scramble out of the way somehow after it cuts the ropes. But then I thought, but he's also chained. So even if the ropes get cut, He's still chained so he wouldn't get away. And so something like that happens. He um, 
he it, basically that happens. He he does something, but he gets the the pendulum to cut the ropes, and then he's able to scramble all the way. But I was like, but what about you know the 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 wrist and foot manacles? Like that wouldn't have been cut away. I, I was like, well, that was that was a, a letdown because it didn't make any sense. But I don't mind because some of these movies like. Uh, they're they're lush in the way that they have their costumes and you know they they go through these like elaborate torture chambers and um they they come up with like ingenious ways to like uh you know have people die which in this movie like nobody died there was like no torture um they they showed a couple of bodies um for example the Christopher Lee is like I don't know what he is but he's he's like the sadist who is put to death at the beginning of the movie and then he somehow rises from the dead and in order to stay alive he 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 needs the blood of 13 virgins and he had only been able to kill 12 and he needs his 13th virgin in order to get this like gnarly green liquid that he's got a henchman who was who was able to drink some of that gross green liquid right before he was hung and so he was after he was hung he was able to come back to life but he still like like got his neck all messed up and <laughs> it's so convoluted and crazy it it was it was actually pretty amusing but the best thing is like there it's only an hour and 20 minutes right it's like so short but I swear, one third of the movie, like it's like 30 minutes, they are in a carriage for 30 minutes traveling from this town to this estate where Christopher Lee is. And like literally 30 minutes, they're in a carriage and it's actually not boring. They just they do some inventive things with the, ca the camera. Like there's two people talking and they keep swinging the camera around the back of the people. And oddly, that created some kind of weird tension. It was interesting. And then they keep driving through these, like, crazy landscapes. Like, they go through the forest, and there's all these, like, like arms and legs and sticking out of the trees and, like, heads. And it's actually kind of, you know, pretty. And there's, like, a lot of mist going through. Um, so, the torture chamber of dr sadism i i give it a thumbs up you should watch it it's one of those crazy old 60s movies that you know doesn't make any sense but it's just so much fun to watch uh so christopher lee um oh and i was gonna say the the leading guy i recognized him from somewhere but i i didn't look it up so, um, I think there was one more thing I wanted to say about that movie, but I, I'm drawing a blank. Um, I, I talked about the Edgar Allan Poe relation, but whatever. Uh, it's fun. And I think I saw that on HBO too. Maybe it might've been, been on Amazon prime. Uh, let me go back to my pictures. Sorry. So there, just in case you want to see that one more time. <laughs> Crazy ass picture. All right. Oh, here's like, look, here they're walking through this. They're walking through the torture chamber and like, like, look at that. That to me is oddly beautiful. Like they're just walking through this, this like hall of skull, like there's skulls and all the rocks and they're walking through that. I mean, those are, that's the kind of thing that I think is like, is really cool. In these old movies. Okay. I already talked about Walk the Blue Fields, Torture Chamber, Banshees. All right. So I basically have two more. Two more to go through. So my husband picked a movie. And he wanted to see this movie. It was called Vengeance. Now, Vengeance to me is like a low-budget indie movie. And... I'm not going to say that this is a, a must watch. I'm going to I'm going to say it's three out of five, right? Three out of five. I enjoyed it. There were there was a couple of things like some things that happened in the in the movie that were a little bit not so believable. Um, it's basically about a guy 
who's uh, jaded. He's from the big city, and he goes to to Texas to follow a story. And, you know, he looks down on the people of Texas. And, you know, another thing that was funny about it, like, everybody in Texas is, like, breaking the stereotype because they are, like, they've all read Chekhov and they can all quote things. It, it, that was a little bit unbelievable. And sorry, I... I know, I'm not saying all Texans are stupid, but can every Texan that you run across quote Chekhov? I don't know. Like, it was happening all over the place. Like, they went out of their way to make every normal Texan sound like a genius, right? Because the whole point was they were rebuffing the stereotype of the main character and to make the main character look like an idiot. And he was. He's an idiot. <coughs> Now, at the beginning of the of the movie, he's a womanizer. He doesn't care about about um, the people that he comes in, comes in contact with. In fact, the whole premise of the story is he's got to go to Texas because a woman f that he met like once as a one night stand, she told her family that that was her boyfriend and that she loved him. And so they called him when she she's murdered and they, you know, he feels bad enough that he goes to her funeral and that's how it starts the whole, the whole story. And while he's there, he thinks that she might've been murdered. And so that he can now do one of these true crime blog shows that are so popular. Right. And that's the whole, like, like what's going on. Um, I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was, it was an interesting movie. Like I said, I would give it three out of five because just a couple of things that happened, like, like what I said to you about like everyone being a genius. I mean, it, it's kind of funny, but it's unbelievable. And then later in the movie, he has a reaction that is so overblown. It just, to me, that just, it just seemed weird and it, it didn't go. But one one really interesting thing about it is like Ashton Kutcher, Ashton Kutcher has an, has a really interesting uh role in this movie. I um I kind of liked his role. So like I would say, like three out of five. If you if you wanna, you know, support an indie movie that's kind of uh you know about the subject that I mentioned. Um <coughs> Wow, I'm coughing. Well, I hope I hope that goes away. Um, then, then watch it. I, I think it was also on HBO. I'm not sure. My husband picked that one. No, it was probably on Netflix. It was most likely on Netflix. And the last one was, oh, I got a bad picture of this one, was called Durante la Tormenta. And so I picked this one because I wanted to see a couple of, uh, there was a, a list of the best Spanish movies or the best movies in Spanish. They're not from Spain. Many of them are from Spain, but movies in, in Spanish that are on Netflix. So I, I was just going through them, but I was skipping the comedies, the romantic comedies. So this one was under sci-fi, and I was happy about that. And it turned out to be about a subject that I really like, which is about um, time travel. And and it's not really about time travel. It was about the ability to affect and change uh, the course of events. And... Um, it the premise was really cool. So this this uh this young boy during a storm, um, he records himself and through a TV, and there's a big storm, and the storm happens I think like 27 years later or something like that, and this woman who is uh the the family bought the house and they hook up the video just to see it, and she's able to communicate with that boy, and she finds out um like right after he made that the boy uh there's a murder and the boy the boy also gets killed and she warns him and he doesn't die and then when she wakes up the next morning like that everything changed like all time got changed and but her memory of the other alternate reality hasn't gone away possibly yet and she had a daughter and the daughter got erased because she never met her husband and um it's a common enough kind of idea and um I won't tell you more after that it was enjoyable I I I uh I liked it I mean if you 
If you like this genre, there are a lot of movies like this, so I'll watch them no matter what, just because I, I, I like this kind of movie. Now, for the casual sci-fi person, I would say maybe this is like a three, three out of five, but for me, it's a must-watch because I'm a huge fan of that kind of genre. Uh, so I, I enjoyed it immensely just because that's my thing but i think for the average moviegoer uh it would be like a three or maybe a 3.5 and if you don't like sci-fi then maybe maybe not maybe like a, a two and a half i don't know i enjoyed it so there we go Oh my gosh, see, I hadn't looked at the time. I've already spoken 30 minutes, so I'm going to stop there. So five movies, um, one book, and not much else to report this week. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and sign off. My, my dog is already bothering me. He wants to get in and get his snacks. He's whining for his snacks. So I hope um, everybody had a, a great week again, and I want to thank you for your support. Sorry, this one kind of feels like there's not much to it, but really this week was kind of a, a, a laid back week for me. I was kind of still um, recovering, maybe. I think I was a little bit, I was really tired this week, so I didn't do that much else. But if I spoke about anything that resonates with you, um, then go ahead and, and please uh, put your comments in the chat and of course you know i'll respond to you so again i want to thank you all for your support and i'll see you next week